Unit 10, Day 4. Zero product property and greatest common factor. So the zero product property states if the product of two numbers, or in this case specifically two factors, equals zero, then one of the factors must also equal zero. Think about that. One times what equals zero? Now well, it's got to be zero. Something times one equals zero. Well, that would have to be zero. If I said it was x times a number, the number would have to be zero, or x would have to be zero. Greatest common factor is the largest common factor of two or more terms. Let's look at some examples of how we apply this. So first, we're going to look at the zero product property. Well, I have two factors. I have x minus 5, and I have x minus 4. When I multiply them together, I get a product of zero. So I know that one of these terms must be equal to zero. So let's check what each of them could be. Well, if x minus 5 equals 0, to get x, I add 5 to each side, and x would equal 5. For x minus 4 equal to 0, I would add 4 to each side, so x would have to equal 4. So, for x minus 5 times x minus 4 to equal 0, either x equals 5 or x equals 4. Go ahead and try letter A and B on your own and see if you can determine what A would have to be. A the variable. Okay, so hopefully you set A plus 6 equal to 0 and A minus 3 equal to 0. If A plus 6 is equal to 0, I'll subtract 6 from each side. A would have to equal negative 6. For A minus 3 to equal 0, add 3 to each side a would have to equal 3. On problem B, it may not have looked as obvious as this when you started, but 3a is one of my factors, and a plus 1 is my other factor. If 3a equals 0, well, let's divide each side by 3 to isolate my variable. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So if a equals 0, this whole expression will become 0. a plus 1, I would subtract 1 from each side, solve for a, so a would equal negative 1. Greatest common factor. Well, we learned already how to factor when we were doing radicals, so let's factor each of these numbers. 6 is 2 times 3. 15 is 3 times times 5. So my greatest common factor is 3. Our next problem, 16, 24, and 36. So we're going to collect all of our factors that are like. So 16 is 2 times 8, 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2. 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. 36 is 2 times 18. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So let's look for common factors. Well, I have a 2 in common. I have another 2 in common. So really that's 4. Then I have a 2 and a 2, but I don't have a third 2. I have a 2, a 3, actually I should have said I have a 3, a 3, and then I don't have another 3. So what is my greatest common factor? The largest number that will go into all of these numbers 
and not leave a remainder? And that answer would be four. 16 divided by four is four, 24 divided by four is six, 39 divided by four is nine. So my GCF is four. 3x squared and 12x. Well, let's think. 3x is 3 times x times x. 12x is 3, whoops, I'll change colors, is 3 times 4 times x. So I'm looking for common factors. I have a 3. And I have an x. I have leftovers in each, but my greatest common factor, therefore, is 3x. Factor out the greatest common factor. Well, let's figure out what our greatest common factor is. 6 is 2 times 3. 14 is 2 times 7. So I have a greatest common factor of 2. So let's divide out a 2 from each term. 2 times what is 6x? 2 times 3x. 2 times what is negative 14? Negative 7. Or 3x minus 7 times 2. 2 is my greatest common factor. 12m squared and 6m? Well, 6m is 6 times n. 12m squared is 6 times 2 times m times m. So I see that I have a common factor of 6 and m. So here I see I can take out my 6m. And my first term, 6m is multiplied times 2 m to give me 12m squared. If I take away my 6 and my m from 6m, what was it really being multiplied by over there? 1. The way to check your work on this, re-multiply them back together. 6 times 2 is 12. m times m is m squared. 6 times 1 is 6. m times 1 is m. If you can multiply them back together and get back to the original problem, the original expression, then you've factored it correctly. Go ahead and try C on your own. Okay, hopefully you've tried that. You should have seen we can take a 12 out. But no letters. I have an A on one and a B on the other. So it's 12 times a minus 12 times 3, oops, not 2, 3, b. Greatest common factor. Well, first let's look at the numbers. I have 16, negative 8, and 4. So I know they're all divisible by 2. In fact, they're all divisible by 4. Then I'll look at my variable terms. I have w squared, which is w times w. I have w to the fourth, which is w times w times w times w. And I have w to the fifth, which is w times w times w times w times w. So now we have 4 that we can take out and w squared that we can factor out. So what do we have left? 4 times what is 16? 4. w squared times what is w squared? Just 1. I don't even need to write that. 4 times what is negative 8? Negative 2. w squared times what is w to the fourth? w squared. Last term, 4 times what is 4? Just 1. 1 what? Well, w squared times w cubed. And you don't even need the 1.
Go ahead and try letter D and letter E on your own. By the way, on number seven, generally we start with our highest level of our exponent. So we probably should have just listed this as 4w squared times w cubed minus 2w squared plus 4. Again, pause your video, try D and E on your own. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you saw that for number one we can factor out a seven and then we get x squared minus four x plus two. And for letter E, we can get out a g squared. g squared times three g squared minus five g plus 15. Problem number eight. Now, we see we have numbers, x's, and y's. So first, for the numbers, between negative four and negative six, what is our greatest common factor? Well, both are negative, and both are even. Now sometimes what I like to do is I like to take out one thing at a time and write what's left over. If I take and divide negative four by negative two, I'm left with positive two. If I take negative six and divide by negative two, I'm left with positive three. Now let's take a look at our x terms. I have x squared and x to the first. Well, x squared is x times x, and x is just x. So I can factor out an x. What's left? Well, x goes into x squared x times, and x goes into x just once. I don't even need to write the one. Now I look at my y terms. I have a y and a y squared. So what do they have in common? y. So in my first term, it's y times 1. In my second term, it's y times y. So there's my final answer. Negative 2xy was my greatest common factor. Go ahead and try f and g on your own. Okay, hopefully you realize that eight and nine, eight is two times four, four is two times two, nine is three times three, no common factor. x squared is x times x, z squared is z times z, no common factor. So f is what it is. And letter G, 6 and 15, they are both divisible by 3. 3 times what? 2 is 6. 3 times what? 5 is 15. Then we move on to our P term, P cubed, P squared. So I see that I can take out a P squared. Maybe leave myself a little more room though. p squared times p gives me p cubed. p squared times 1 gives me p squared. And now my k term, I see I have k squared and k to the fourth. What's the greatest factor I can get out? k squared. k squared times what is k squared? Just 1. k squared times what is k to the fourth? k squared. So my final answer becomes 3p squared k squared times the quantity 2p plus 5k squared. And that's it for day four.